of you have uh, had an experience of developing anything with Raspberry Pi? Oh, cool. Um, and how many have you uh, used WebRTC for streaming from it? Hmm. So, uh, so we know the challenges, right? Earlier there was no WebRTC support. Uh, now with Raspberry Pi 2, we have a little bit of support. So this is Raspberry Pi 2, which we are using. We are using UV4L driver. Uh, so that's the code which we uh, have to begin with. This is the most famous code, by the way, used in uh, you know very many WebRTC presentations on LinkedIn. So uh, yeah, so I am uh, basically a telecom developer. Started like that. I've been working on WebRTC since the last four five years. Um, and uh, this is my friend Deepak. I'm Deepak. I'm a better developer. Huh. Okay. Okay. And this one book I've written. So this book is mostly on uh, how WebRTC can be integrated in telecom scenarios using SIP. Um, cool. So we know the definition without plugins, no extensions, no softwares. We know the stack. It has, uh, you know, jitter control, buffer. It has the three core APIs. So just this is just a zest of you know everything that I need to begin with. So I know you already know this, uh, but just so we have screen sharing these days, which a lot of people demand. We have get stats, which tell us how the network is doing on the client's end, and then we have the three core APIs, you know, for uh, audio, video, for the session, and for uh, data channels, uh, you know, for file transfer and for chat. So, uh, so uh, I wanted to share what extra you could do with, you know, what is already there. Yeah, you could build a communication collaboration platform. You can do chatting. What, what else can you do with it? So, came across a couple of uh, scenarios which one can use. So, this is developers coding. You know, so every code they write can be synced. Uh, to both of them, so they can both edit the same file simultaneously. And another one, so everybody can draw simultaneously on the same draw board. And this one is my favorite. So, uh, uh, so lot of, I think months back, Skype came up with this uh, real-time translation API. When you know somebody says "konnichiwa" uh, in Japanese, and the other person hears in English and he says good morning in English, the other person hears in Japanese, it's the same thing. It gets written as well. So basically this is like uh, voice to text, text translation, again uh, sync and then again convert back to uh, voice. So both of them can talk in their own native languages. So this one, these three are for the stats, uh, different for different browsers. So from here, right. So, uh, how many of you have uh, got a chance to use WebGL or 3GS? One. Okay, sad if you are not using it because it's awesome. So let me show you some examples. So this is a heat map. You can see the libraries loaded there. This is from a from Predator Vision. So basically, it tells me what kind of movement is in front of the cam. So it's again going to be used, uh, you know, like part of image processing for the robot to move. Then, so this one is for edge detection. So basically what it does is, this is without WebGL by the way. What this does is it just stacks, uh, you know, the frames on canvas and finds the difference. So it tells you the edge. Then, and then there are a couple of ready-made ones. Play games you know, with WebRTC, with uh, this augmented reality, and uh, you know, a good concept. With, yeah. So this is a game which I made. So uh, here, we, both of them can play chess by actually physically lifting, uh, you know, a piece without touching the keyboard at all, just by with the hand. You can lift and uh, put a piece on another uh, square. So I'll show you uh, in a while how is that done. Then this is the. Uh, most thought of WebRTC use cases these days, distance learning. This was already covered actually in the morning yet. So uh, recruitment, distance learning, customer care, back, as, back office communications, enterprise communication and collaborations. So how can we use WebRTC in Internet of Things? You know, how best? So this is any general uh, IoT stack. It just starts with the machines. Then there's an SOC like Raspberry Pi or something and then there's uh, the network and then there's our uh, server-side logic, right? So, if we put 
web rtc so we can uh, first of all we can use surveillance like just direct implement it there use motion just make surveillance happen it works what else besides that so besides that we can use it for building smart cities we can use it for building power grid management for you know maintaining session between the data flows then there's robotics which i am doing um variables yeah this is a generic communication diagram the basic of iot and this was my first experiment like months back so basically a home automation so mostly people quit it there so but this was the starting point it has to be the starting point so what all the camera access libraries which any raspberry pi developer has an option for um mostly people just use motion because it's like really easy i also used it initially then i tried uh, experiment experimenting with uh, others you know fs blue cam that's for uh, if you're using directly the webcam so this janus gateway which is good very good then directly webrtc is a browser works with couple of plugins ice weasel and all that that was earlier so now with raspberry pi 2 you can use uh, uv4l with the webrtc driver and it works right so with all the different options one can use for streaming in and uh, from raspberry pi why do we pick up uh, webrtc so basically when i was using you know other softwares they they were very slow the frame rate was slow it was heavy and i used to see the transition between the frames it used to come disappear then come disappear so um same for mpeg it used to come disappear come disappear but with webrtc it doesn't happen like that it's smooth and we i have an array you know of uh, libraries and use cases use cases i can just pick and implement i showed you a couple of them right now so these are the different reasons why you should opt for webrtc when you know going for a uh, media streaming in iot and uh, so uh, these are the modes of communication i am supporting one can also add in nfc or uh, you know zigbee or any other uh, way one likes but these are the four basic modes is ethernet which is when it's it's uh, you know it's just in a place like surveillance then it's bluetooth when it's in vicinity like uh, deepak was controlling from the tab because it was in vicinity then there's wifi the way i was controlling and then there's gsm uh, 3g when you have to control it let's say if to control the bot from america you know just control the bots in india that way so uh, this is the communication flow that's happening right now all the uh, so for the ble device it's because it's like really nearby it's almost on the line of sight i'm not streaming but for uh, over uh this and this network i am okay before i go forward anybody has any question on what was discussed up till now no okay so this was the idea uh, so we all know swachh bharat abhiyan right yes so instead of doing that why don't i build this you know so that's that's me cleaning voluntary services but instead of that i could just build a bot which could do my work you know so this is where my friend deepak will take over he'll explain how he began and what all he did to you know build this robot and how can you make one yourself okay thank you thank you all my okay hello guys so uh the idea started from uh, as you know that bharat swachhita abhiyan me and my friend decide to let's make a robot because i have experience in robotics and uh, my colleague she know about uh, web rtc and other technology and uh, currently we are working on iot and all. so we decided let's combine all the technology together and make it useful something okay so so the design is started from that uh, webcam r5 and the charging circuit the battery okay and the ecu control unit to protect your okay by the way i'll tell you that uh, he is not getting gps signal that side sleeping <laughs> okay so and uh, dc motors it's just this okay that uh, it's a very tricky idea uh, that uh, you know uh, have you seen any cleaning robot uh, in your life 
So it's very simple. Just uh, three rotating uh, motors are rotating. Two are in clockwise, others in anti-clockwise. But uh, with this design, you know, I uh, initially I started with that design, but uh, I can't able to get a result from this. So then I change. It's a uh, tricky. I'll uh, share with you. Then uh, what I did, I put one rubber strip in that layer of this one and put a an angle 45 degree of two garbage. So you know that the first clockwise, anti-clockwise motor give a force and momentum to garbage, and that garbage goes uh, get a direction of 45 degree. So it goes inside there, and uh, uh, after that, you know, it's uh, going inside that bucket. So uh, with this robot, we can fetch the data. Uh, sorry, data, no garbage, and and uh, and uh, uh, further, we are thinking about to garbage segregation uh, and green garbage and the plastic and all. And uh, how I'm using. Bluetooth low energy. This one I'm using through Adafruit Alley. Okay, they are providing all the things you can also use with that. Okay, so this is a keypad I'm using. Okay, next. And I'm just giving you small, small uh, details. Uh, this one is RPI and uh, Arduino board. Okay, and uh, this is the GPS system and the temperature sensor. And this is the ultrasonic sensor. Suppose, uh, uh, okay, when we started, then we think that uh, let's give him some intelligence to our robot. So what we did, we just put a ultrasonic sensor and uh, give a distance. If suppose that ultrason some hurdles will near comes near to 80 centimeter, then it will start uh, give you some signals and all. Okay, and beeping. Okay, next and. Uh, other one is camera module. With the help of that camera module, all over the world you can see that whatever that it's a, that robot is Leading. taking. And uh, this one. Okay, this one is relay. Leave it. Okay. Yes, this is my idea. Okay, that idea came. So you can see that this are clockwise, and uh, this one is clockwise, and other one is uh, anti-clockwise, and this is the strip, which is giving the 45 degree of angle. So with the help of this one, and that garbage going on top. Okay, it's just for supporting that to strip, which uh, goes to parallel of that surface. So you know, Indian roads are full of potholes <laughs> and you know, broken, uneven. Yeah. We put the small wheel so that it goes and comes back up. So I is that uh, suppose that a stone came, then what we can do? So we put just rubber, so it can stretch. Okay. So next one, come. So basically, the project that this that, uh, stuff that we are showing here, it's not a commercial product. It's nothing we made for profit or uh, you know to to uh, prove anything. It was uh, just we had free time and we wanted to do something useful, so we started making it. Got lot of support, and it's very easy. I come from software background, and I, I managed to make it. He's from embedded and mechanical, but the idea behind is it's all open source. I write blogs about it. I give lectures about it. I even teach people how to make stuff like this. Um, you, I it would be very happy if you know somebody comes up with a better design of this or makes something even better. Okay, so uh, there has to be a dashboard, right? So I made this kind of a dashboard. So I'll just briefly summarize the components here. So uh, this is um, uh, you, with the GPS. This feature, the what the one that gives the uh, uh, distance, north, south, and these uh, Google Map pins are directly dependent on the uh, GPS module. The uh, coordinates fetched by it. This one is the uh, temperature graph. This is the heat graph, and this is the uh, checksum error and all that. Uh, you know, other values which I don't understand with the sensors are sending. So these graphs are made with help of uh, Google Charts API. This one is Google Material, and these are just normal Google Charts. Um, and these are the buttons which control the bot. And so from this page. Okay, so in addition to that, so that I could write uh, you know programs for it, I even developed APIs. So 
I could show you how I can control the bot using APIs. touching the audio APIs right now, I'm just touching the 